Good afternoon, everybody. Good timing to our 2020 celebration of Dojinki. I've just got a few remarks, just a few minutes, because, you know, um, just to talk about what Dojinki is. What's a slide, please? Thank you. So, I'd like to say the Pulitzer Society of Omaha and the Polish Home presents slide Dojinki 2022. So what is Dojinki? Does somebody know already so then they, they can just go about their business? That's right, it's a fault. That, so it's a Polish custom in the, in, the, in the rural areas where the farming goes on, which is usually where farming goes on, just about everywhere in the world, the rural areas. There, there is a harvest festival. Now in Poland, that season's kind of already come and gone. Uh, but here in Nebraska, I know for a fact there's guys out there right now in those combines doing that kind of stuff. And remember, we're a lot further south. Our growing season is going to be a little longer. Poland's a little further north. So uh, right now, uh, their dojinki season occurred while we were over there. We were just, uh, the Polish one just had a tour that just went over there. Okay, let's see what the next slide is. All right, so the, what do you think? Can anybody think when we start the festival, the day of the festival, What's like the first thing that's going to happen that the community is going to do? That's right. We're going to go to Mass. So on the day the festival begins with Holy Mass, and this may be held outdoors. So you have the harvesters, which are kind of like the, which the, the people that are actually doing the work. And usually in this case, and in the social construct, and the way things are, the harvesters in the old days would be the peasants. They'll be, be they'll be dressed in all their regional whatever regional costume is there. So they'll be dressed in their national costumes, and they'll have somebody that either represents that that either the landowner or is rep or the representative of the landowner and his family, and they will be dressed in their clothes, their their finest clothes. Now, usually, if you see it redone these days, the, they're going to be looking. Uh, in finery that's kind of a little antiquated, kind of what was worn in the United States around the Civil War. Now, at the Mass, during the offering, in addition to communion wafers and wine, the harvesters bring a harvest wreath, as you can see the picture there, other herbs, sheaves of grain, fruit baskets, and other crops that symbolize the abundance of the harvest. Next slide, please. So after Mass, what happens is all the harvesters, the people involved in the harvest, they're going to process to the landowner's house. Now, sort of the way Poland happens in the old days is you'll have a landowner, uh, a gentry member, a schlachtich, whatever, that's the Polish word for gentry. And they're going to own the land, and the peasants, they may have their own private holdings, but a lot of the land they're farming belongs to the belongs to the Lord, the squire, whatever you want to call it. So they're going to go to the manor, the Lord's manor. And as they go, they'll sing typical harvest songs. And so just like a normal procession. And you'll have one person who's the, the, the first harvester that's a female. So you'll have like a senior or first harvester, one male, one female. So the word for the female one is Shodownice. And she wears a harvest wreath as a kind of a headpiece, not the big wreath, but a smaller wreath. And it's, they make it of golden grain, and they have meadow flowers, and maybe apples or clusters of berries, and, and ribbons. And she takes the main wreath and presents it to the squire, and he'll hang this wreath up in a place of honor in the manor house. He then pours himself in the oldest male harvester, a glass of vodka, and then they toast the entire company. But I'm driving, so I'm not doing that. And then the squire invites everybody to a feast. So with the squire, the landowner, and his family, and all the peasants, they're going to have this feast. Let's see, next slide. We have a picture of the feast. Okay, that's back to, that's back to Mass. You see at the altar, with along with the, op the uh, offering, the bread there, and this is actually what happens, and this is a modern progression, and they still do this today. And I've got a picture of it later, but when we were in Poland this year, we went to visit the shrine, and we went to Częstochowa to go to the monastery Jasnogura, where the Black Madonna is. And that day just happened to be like the National Harvest Festival in Częstochowa. 
So it was like a really, it was packed. There were what, I think 10,000 people there. And the mass was outdoors, so like those big huge masses that John Paul used to have at Chase the Hola. That whole area was full. And we kind of get in there on the edge. And so that's kind of what it looks like. So next slide. And there's more modern progression. And next slide. Now this is from when we were there. I took that picture. And that, that wreath is from, so when I used to go to Poland, I used to go with a friend of mine. And his family, they live in a village called Kutzmierzu Lubrzyce. That's the group. I just happened to see, oh, look, there's the Kutzmierzu people. And that's their wreath. OK, so now close to everybody's heart is the feast. So a few words about the nature of the feast. Now, of course, weather permitting, but they would set up long tables outdoors in the squire's front yard. So you have this manor house, and it's kind of a long, low thing. A lot of times the manors look with you know a few pillars around the portico and stuff like that. And then, so this would be the manor house. So in this large front yard, which is kind of almost like a, you know, a little bit of a formal, not like formal garden, that'd be in the back, I think, but a front yard where it's nice and clear, lots of space. You'd have all these long tables laid out in the entire village. And the priest would bless the food and the feast would begin. And so, even despite the fact that this gentry folks would join the peasants at the feast, it was all peasant food. It wasn't any of the, the uh, more elegant cuisine, uh, Polish cuisine. And some of the things you might have there, um, rye bread that they baked from the grain that was just harvested and milled, cold roast bacon, which I can't see why, you know, that's always delicious, isn't it? No. Head cheese. Now we get now we get to the parts where maybe we don't eat these things in America. I do love it. Head cheese. It's uh, so saison. It's back. The bowl is actually called by the French word, believe it or not. Uh, jelly pig's feet. Kishka. Who likes kishka? Now remember, kishka comes in different varieties. You got blood kishka and regular kishka. I highly recommend our, our friends down at Frank's Sausage Meats. You can get the non-blood kishka. But blood sausage is terribly delicious and very good at breakfast when you're full trust me. Cabbage and sausage, uh, because you know why? Because sauerkraut is not available at that time of year. You really haven't made it yet because you've just harvested the cabbage. You, you have to have time to harvest it, salt it, and let it sit in the crocs before the sauerkraut's ready. Let's see. Um, boiled pork hocks. Let me tell you, in Poland, the, uh, the pork hock, the galonka, is a... It's a thing to behold because sometimes you get them, they're the size of babies' heads. They're so huge and they're so delicious. They're really, really great. Let's see here. Uh, boiled potatoes and buckwheat groats. I highly recommend buckwheat groats are delicious. That's kasha and it can be served with some salsas. Uh, buckwheat groats with fried salt pork nuggets. So you take that salt pork and you dice it up and you fry it down and and the par parts get hard and then you got the, the fat and you pour it on top of the kishka. I like to put those on pierogi. But because in Poland, I never get like sour cream with my pierogi. Never. I've seen it in Poland. Unless they're fruit pierogi, that's sweet. But anyway, different, different story. Let's see. Um, noodles and cheese, buckwheat pie, which is a particular favorite in Eastern Poland. Uh, dill pickles, tomatoes, sour cucumbers. And of course, we're going to have a little bit of beer. Okay, probably a lot of beer to wash it down. And afterwards, you get uh, a kolach, which is a round yeast cake or coffee cake and fresh fruit as, as set, that's set out for dessert. And then of course, after you eat, you gotta have some form of entertainment. Let's see at the next slide. No, this, this is actually the last slide, so. Um, some forms of entertainment. So the squire will take the the Shodownica, the lead female harm, and the, the Lord, they will dance. And likewise, the Lord's wife will dance with the Shodownik. Shodownik, that's just masculine. So the, so the lead harvesters, male and female, will dance with the Lord and his lady. And afterwards, everybody all dances. Now, when we transfer this kind of thing to America, this usually, you know, what usually happens is not going to happen here, unfortunately, but you'll get an ensemble to do a folk dance demonstration and uh, that kind of stuff. And in addition, 
you might have the dancers like they do when you go on the tours and you do the culture things they come out and ask people to dance and that's when i just like no i've got bad knees and legs so i can't do it sorry well what i do is i actually sit so far in the back where you can't they can't get from and then i got to make excuses but at least my polish is good enough to say i don't know I'm not dancing. at any rate so uh and then of course you'll have folk music and that kind of stuff now these kind of things now, now, do you think they play a lot of polkas during this? Sure. No, polkas are Czech games. It's not a Polish at all. Uh, you can see the Krakowiak, Mazurka, Trojak, Oberek. Um, so, I'm, and I'm sure the untrained observer, they all look like polkas anyway, but technically speaking, the polka is a Czech dance. And I remember coming to the first time I ever came to an event here, like 30 years ago, and my friend's mom is like, Poles don't pull anyway. <laughs> And they, they actually don't. But the national dances of the Poland are all those other ones I talked about. But a, and a lot of times they're going to be regional. Uh, when we see, I, I show, just so you know, on one, sat, one Sunday afternoon a month after the card parties, I show movies in Polish with subtitles. And a couple of months ago we had one called uh, Whoopsie, which is about peasant life in Poland. And of course there's a lot of drama wrapped up in it. But you do see this kind of celebration because, you know, having a big meal and then a dance, that's kind of, you know, okay, that works for the dojinki, that works for a wedding, that works for everything else. And you can see the dances they do, they do an oberic and stuff like that. And they're all like a three, four time, you know, when the guy's trying to teach you, raz, da, shit, raz, da, shit, that kind of dance, that kind of stuff. And, and, the, and the musicianship, now remember, so you get the kind of music you get, violin, clarinet, accordion, thank goodness we got time for that. Uh, bass fiddle played with a bow and that kind of stuff and it's all sort of uh, that older type of music so uh, another thing when if we if we want to do a dojiki and have it transmitted to america you might have a harvest fair now in in, in the chinks after the mass now the, there's a big avenue that leads right up the hill right towards the monastery and that place was lined with vendors and people i mean i i Yes, Tom, he was there. It, just, it was just like a sea of people. It was, you know, golly gee. And, but, so you kind of have that fair atmosphere where vendors show up and they bring different foods and different products, a lot of religious stuff and all that kind of stuff. So it's a big fair that, that's going on. So uh, in, when, in the Polish-American setting, you might have a fair like that kind of stuff. And you'd also have where gardeners and homemakers do uh, the same kind of stuff you do at the county fair. And in fact, one of the best things to do maybe here in the United States now is, is that at the state fair or the county fair that a booth is placed so that each ethnic group, especially at the polls, that do have these, these long-standing customs can go and present these things to people and you would still, so it, there's kind of a lot of commonality where when we're all giving thanks and celebrating the fact that the harvest has come in, everybody likes to get together. I mean, it's not just Polish people. Obviously, we do it here in America, I mean, with the state and county fairs. And everybody comes in to give thanks, especially because we start with a mass. And we give thanks for such a harvest because it's so important. And especially, you know, in those prior centuries, because those farms, it's not like cash farming. It's almost like subsistence farming. And you've got to have enough at the end of that harvest to get you, to get you through, not only get you through the winter, until things are producing again, but remember you have to have that extra grain because you have to have grain to plant. So not all of it gets eaten, some of it has to get saved. So it's just a, a celebration of the plenty. And uh, where maybe through a lot of times of the year, the Lord and the peasantry aren't quite on the same page, here you have where the interests of both really come together because it's no use being a landlord if it's not productive. So here we find where even in that kind of case of ownership, where both parties are, are sharing the same interests and they're kind of working together. At any rate, so, just to recap, so Dojinki, it's the Harvest Festival. It starts with a mass and a procession and a feast and a dance. So here what we're having is, we've got a little bit of talk, which I'm pretty sure you're all gonna be very thankful. I'm almost done with it. And we're gonna have some crafts for the kids and some fellowship and some food to eat.